Let us open our Bible to the book of Jeremiah 28. Jeremiah 28. False teacher threats. False teacher threats. Jeremiah 28 verses 1 to 9. A false prophet opposes Jeremiah. Verses 1 to 4. Ananiah claims to hear Yahweh saying the captivity will last only two years instead of 70. And he speaks specifically about the same two things in Jeremiah's previous prophecy in, in chapter 27. He, the two, the two, the two words are yokes and vessels. Verses 1 and 5. Ananias' prophecy directly contradicts Jeremiah's. And Ananias is sharing it publicly with all the religious leaders. Verses 6 to 9. Jeremiah supports Ananias graciously, politely, saying he wishes Ananias' words were true. But they aren't. Jeremiah relates, restates, he restates the prophecy he received from Yahweh. Ananias spoke a false prophecy. He is, here is not a word uh, of, of good counsel urging the Jews to repent and return to Yahweh. He, he promises temporal mercies in Yahweh's name, but makes no mention of the spiritual mercies which Yahweh always promised with, with earthly blessings. For Yahweh's promises are seldom without conditions, especially the commands of obeying Him and keeping His commands. I quote, I quote, Know therefore that Yahweh your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. And of course, this is quoting Deuteronomy 7, 7 verse 9. Everything is conditional in this heaven when he makes the general the general blessings. This was not the first time Jeremiah had prayed for the people, so he prophesied against them. He appeals to the event to prove Ananias' false word. The prophet who spoke only of peace and prosperity without adding that they must not be willful sin uh, 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 sin uh, uh, stop Yahweh's uh, favor, favors. Will uh, uh, that they must not by wolf? I mean, let me say it again. The prophet who spoke only of peace and prosperity, without adding that they must not by willful sin stop Yahweh's favors, will be proved a false prophet. Those who do not declare the alarming as well as encouraging parts of Yahweh's word and call people to repentance and faith and holiness tread on the steps of the false prophets. The gospel of Christ encourages people to do works meet for repentance but gives no encouragement to continue in sin. Jeremiah 28 verses 10 to 17. The false prophet warned of his, of, of his approaching death. Verses 10 to 11. Ananiah reacts fiercely, taking the yoke off Jeremiah's neck, because in the, in the, in the previous chapter, it is said that God asked uh, Jeremiah to carry a yoke, a wooden yoke on his neck as, as 
to make people understand that they're going to be taken captive and serve the Babylonian uh, like, like oxen with yokes on their necks. So he takes the yoke of uh, Jeremiah's neck and breaks it. He is not backing down from his false prophecy. Notice that Jeremiah does not resist, protest, or make any sin. Jeremiah 12 to th th verses, verses 12 to 13. Jeremiah receives, receives a rebuke from Yahweh to pass on to, to Ananiah. He may have broken the yokes of wood, but his angry, his angry outburst has severe consequences. Yokes of iron. Ananiah is sentenced to die in the same year. And Jeremiah, when he has received, received the direction from Yahweh, boldly tells him so. But not before he receives that commission. Jeremiah did not do it by his, himself. He waited until God gives him the instruction before he can go and say anything. Those who tell sinners that they shall have peace, for they harden their hearts in contempt of Yahweh's word, have much to answer for. The servant of Yahweh must be gentle to all people. He must give up heaven his right and leave the Yahweh to plead his cause. Every attempt of ungodly people to make vain the purposes of God will add to their, to their misery. Let us talk of eight threats of false teachers. That is why I did borrow this from Senior Pastor Colin Smith, an article published on March the 18th, 2013, with the same title, but the same title is Seven, Seven Threats of False Teachers. The scripture says, there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, and a quote, a partial quote of Second Peter 2 verse 1. There are no ifs, ands, or buts in Peter's word. It's a clear and definite statement. There were false prophets among the people of Israel of the Old Testament. That's, that's a matter of history. False prophets were a constant problem in the Old Testament. And those who falsely claimed to be prophets of God were to be stoned, as it is said in Deuteronomy 13 verse 5. The people rarely had the will to deal with them. So they multiplied, causing disaster to the to the spiritual to a life of God as a people. In the same way Peter says, I quote him, there will be false teachers among you and I quote. Notice the word among you, among you. Peter is writing to the church and says, I quote, there will be false prophets among you. So he is not talking about new age people on, on television, our world. He is talking about people in the local church, members of a local congregation. There is no such thing as a pure church, this side of heaven. You will never find it. The wheat and the tars grow together. Satan is the counterfeiter. He has a false gospel, as it is said in Galatians 1 verses 6 to 9, preached by false ministers, as it is said in 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 12 to 13, 
producing false creations, as it is said in 2 Corinthians 11, 26. Satan plants his counterfeits wherever God plants true believers, as it is said in Matthew 13, verse 38. Now, authentic and counterfeits. How would you recognize counterfeit Christianity? In 2 Peter 1, we read about genuine believers. And in 2 Peter 2, we read about counterfeit believers. That means false believers. If you put these chapters side by side, you will see the difference between authentic and counterfeit believers. There are many different, I listed three, three, three differences that will show us the characteristics, the traits of false, of false preachers. First, different source. Where does the message come from? Peter says, I quote, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord Yahshua Christ, end of quote, quoting uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 16. And then he says, the false teachers exploit you, I quote, with stories they have made up, end of quote, in 2 Peter 2 verse 3. So the true teacher sources what he says from the Bible. The false teacher relies on his own creativity. He makes up his own message. You will be you will not be uh, we will not be surprised to see a preacher in a church preaching the saying he's all preached without even pronouncing any single word of God without not, 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 not quoting any verse of the Bible. Second, different message. What is the substance of the message? For the true teacher, Yahshua Christ is central to all message. The scripture says, we have everything we need for life and godliness in him. End of quote. Quoting Second Peter. 1 verse 3. For the false teacher, Yahshua is, is at the margins. I quote, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought, who brought them. And of quote, quoting Second Peter 2 verse 1. Heresies are the doctrines that are contrary to the gospel. Notice the word secretly. It's rare for someone in church to openly deny Yahshua. Movement away from the centrality of Christ is therefore subtle. The false teacher will speak about how other people can help change your life. But if you listen carefully to what he is saying, you will see that Yahshua Christ is not a essential, essential to his message. Third, different position. <coughs> In what position would the, the message leave you? The true Christian, I quote, escapes the corruption of the world caused by evil desires, end of quote, quoting 2 Peter 1 verse 4. Listen to how Peter describes the counterfeit, the false Christian. I quote, they promise freedom while they themselves are slaves of depravity, for a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. And of quote, this is quoting Second Peter 2 verse 19. The true believer is escaping corruption, while the counterfeit believer is mastered by corruption. Joyce, Joyce Meyer would tell her followers, don't try to be perfect. The total opposite 
of God's word which says, I quote, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I Yahweh am holy, end of quote. quote. This is in, in, in Leviticus 20 verse 26. Fourth, different character. What kind of people does the message produce? The true believer pursues goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brother kindness, and love, as it is said in 2 Peter 1 verse 5. The counterfeit Christian is marked by pride, arrogance, and slander, as he said in 2 Peter 2 verse 10. They are experts experts in greed and their eyes are full of adultery as it is said in 2 Peter 2 verse 13. They are also, they also I quote, despise authority in, as it said in 2 Peter 2 verse 10. This is a general characteristic of a counterfeit believer. Fifth, different appeal why should you listen to the message? The true teacher appeals to scripture. As I said, I quote, We have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it. And of quote, quoting Second Peter 1 verse 19. Yahweh has spoken, and the true teacher appeals to his word. The false teacher makes a rather different appeal. I quote, By appealing to the lustful desires of sinful human nature, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. End of quote. Quoting 2 Peter 2 verse 18. So the true teacher asks like this, what has God said in his word? The false teacher asked, what do people want to hear? What will appeal to their flesh? Six, six different fruit. What result does the message have in people's lives? The true believer is effective and productive in his or her knowledge of Yahshua Christ. As it is said in 2 Peter 1 verse 8, the counterfeit is, I quote, like a spring without water, end of quote, as, as, as said in 2 Peter 2 verse 17. This is an extraordinary picture. They promise much, but produce little. For the fruit, the fruit of, the fruits a good teacher brings to to Yahweh is a basket of converted and saved souls. False teachers do not produce converted and saved souls. Seventh, different end. Where does the message ultimately lead you? Here we find the most disturbing contrast of all. The true believer will receive, I quote, a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Yahshua Christ. And of quote, quote in 2 Peter 1 verse 11. The false believer will experience, I quote, swift destruction. And of quote, uh, quoting 2 Peter 2 verse 1. I quote, their condemnation has long been hanging over them. And their destruction has not been sleeping. And of quote, quoting 2 Peter 2 verse 3. Yahshua tells us that there will be many who have been involved in ministry in his name to whom he will say, I quote, depart from me, I never knew you, and a quote, quoting Matthew 7 verse 21. Who are these people? Surely, Peter described, this, describes them in 2 Peter 2. If they fail to be Christ-like, false teachers tend to be different to Christ. A Christian, a Christian, a Christ follower, 
must be like Christ. Yet, while Christ is humble, the false teacher will boast will, with self, pride, arrogance. While Christ is servant of all, the false teacher will require to be served by all. While Christ is the lover of all, the false teacher wants to be loved by all. And so on, and so on. You will see all the characters of Christ, they will often be the contrary of each of them. A false teacher will always show attitudes and faces that are the opposite of Yahshua Christ. Yahshua Christ, he, he, who is our way to salvation. That's why we have to follow him. A good teacher must at all times be faithful to Christ. He or she must be like Christ. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Let us take these prayer points. Let us pray. Let us pray. Jeremiah 28. Yahweh our God is God. He is the faithful God. Keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him. And keep his commandments. In the name of Yeshua. I will not follow any prophecy devoid of a word of good counsel urging the people to repent and return to Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, I will not follow any prophecy devoid of the word of good counsel urging the people to repent and return to Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, I will not follow any, any prophecy devoid of a word of good counsel urging the people to repent and return to Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I will not follow any prophecy making promises of temporal mercies in Yahweh's name, but making no mention of the spiritual mercies. In the name of Yeshua, I will not follow any prophecy making pro pro promises of temporal mercies in Yahweh's name, but making no mention of the spiritual mercies in the name of Yeshua will not follow any prophecy making promises of temporal mercies in Yahweh's name, but making no mention of the spiritual mercies. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. For Yahweh is a covenant God. In the name of Yeshua, Yahweh is a covenant God. For Yahweh is a covenant God. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is his covenant name by which he reveals himself more intimately to his covenant people who know him. In the name of Yeshua, our Father Yahweh promises spiritual mercies with earthly blessings if only the beneficiary obeys his commands in the name of Yeshua. I will not follow any prophecy prayer. I will not follow any prophecy that promises Yahweh's bre breaking the yoke of oppression with no condition or duty. In the name of Yeshua, I will not follow any prophecy that promises Yahweh's breaking the yoke of oppression with no condition or duty. In the name of Yeshua will not follow any prophecy that promises Yahweh's breaking the yoke of oppression with no condition of duty. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I will pray Yahweh to fulfill the good words of so prophesied. In the name of Yeshua, I will pray Yahweh to fulfill the good words so prophesied. In the name of Yeshua, I will pray Yahweh to fulfill the good words so prophesied. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. But I will be careful to always inquire of Yahweh his confirmation and or denial of the prophecy claimed to be his. In the name of Yeshua, but I will be careful to always inquire of Yahweh his confirmation or denial of the prophecy claimed to be his. 
in the name of Yeshua, that I will be careful to always inquire Yahweh of Yahweh, his confirmation or denial of the prophecy claimed to be his. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I will recognize the prophets who prophesize peace and prosperity as one truly sent by Yahweh only if his or her prediction comes true. In the name of Yeshua, we will recognize the prophet who prophesies peace and prosperity as one truly sent by Yahweh only if his or her prediction comes true. In the name of Yeshua, I will recognize the prophets who prophesies peace and prosperity as one truly sent by Yahweh only if his or her prediction comes true. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Lord, I 